It's Titanium. Yeah, rendition of and David Guetta's uh, amazing tune. It was a hit in the early of the first yeah. year. So welcome back. We just joined us. I'm actually holding a mug of awesome chocolate goodies. Thank you to Evelyn's Chocolate House for providing us a nice sugary afternoon ahead. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get to the, sec uh, the first topic of the day. So we shall provide this amazing chocolate to our lovely guests. Thank Yay. you for joining us. Welcome Thank back. You. Yay. <laughs> nice. Hi. And of course, in case you're wondering what we're going to be talking about and who's the uh, person, the VIP in our studios today, we're talking about SSO, right? Um, Malaysia's goal of becoming a high-income nation. That's not too soon from, um, I mean, not too long away from now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about uh, to the Vice President of Shared Services and Outsourcing Cluster of MDEC. Very good afternoon, Michael Warren. Thank you. Hello. Welcome to Hi. the show. Mm. Hi. Thank you for having me. Excellent day. A yeah. pleasure. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's get right Coming up soon. Uh, it is. I was excited. So, Mr. Warren, probably we could just jump right into the topic. Perhaps you can share with us what is the shared services and outsourcing exactly? What field of study ha has it evolved mm. into? Mm. Um, we all know about Vision 2020. Right. Uh, Vision 2020 says moving towards a high income society. Yes. And, and we talk about this economic transformation plan that's happening in Malaysia right now. Mm -hmm. So we're all on this upward journey of getting more income, mm -hmm. getting more jobs into the country and all that. But one of the largest fueling parts of this whole thing is this area called shared services and outsourcing. Right. We've started to see thousands, hundreds of thousands of jobs appearing in Malaysia over the last decade. And the salary levels of these jobs have been going up. Mm -hmm. So what basically happens is companies that operate, they tend to produce products and services. And these products and services are sold to market. Yeah. But what people realize is that they can take common functions and then they can put that into a separate business unit mm -hmm. that supports the sales of the products. Right. So shared services is about taking common parts of the supply chain, mm -hmm. putting that into a company okay. that supports multiple different offices, okay. either across America, across Europe, across the world, but say from Malaysia. Mm. So we're getting <coughs> thousands of jobs being created in Malaysia by very big multinationals from around the world. They're coming here, setting up big operations, sometimes 100 people, 1,000 people, 8,000 people in an organization. Mm. And these jobs are all available mm. to Malaysians right. who want to come and work here. But, so shared service is very much about controlling, setting up the centralized locations. And in outsourcing, sometimes you don't do it yourself. Sometimes you pass it to another company mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do that, to support global operations. So shared services and outsourcing talks about that consolidation. Right. Oh, I see. So now, uh, why is uh, shared services and outsourcing uh, becoming increasingly important in today's economy? Yeah. So I, I think you know a lot of companies, a lot of people mm -hmm. realize that we can't do everything ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, a very, a very simple example. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with technology. Mm -hmm. When you wash your car, okay, you have two choices. You can take your car. Uh -huh. and you can wash it yourself yeah and you spend an hour washing your car and you get uh -huh. tired and you're sweating and all that uh -huh. or you can turn around and say well maybe i'll go down to the car wash and outsource that <laughs> to somebody who can wash it for me uh -huh. and i can take that time and i can go back and use that time to do something that i'm more focused on my core business uh -huh. to make more money for myself uh -huh. i've just outsourced my work to somebody else and that car wash is a shared center <laughs> that washes many different cars. Hmm. That mm -hmm. same example mm -hmm. is what's happening for companies around the world. Right. Many companies are saying, I cannot do everything. Mm -hmm. I've got to focus on core. <coughs> I've got to focus on what is important. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that is not core, I'll pass it to somebody else, th to another part of my organization, or maybe to another company right. to do for me. I yeah? see. Right. Right. That's so perhaps with that idea in mind, yeah. uh, my, my, my question is, uh, for example, where we would outsource the, the, the certain tasks to another organization, how much can we trust the other organization to get mm. the job done correctly as how we want it to? Maybe you could share mm. that previous trend to the current one now. Have we involved? Are we Malaysians able to take up the challenge to make everything into a mm. very smooth flowing <coughs> process? Yeah. Mm. I, I, I think the fear of outsourcing, of passing something to somebody else, mm -hmm. is very much de dependent on the the standard quality that you get back. Okay. Right. Now, if I if I give some jobs out and the quality I get back is bad, mm -hmm. then I, I don't really trust that organization. Correct. One of the things that's very special about Malaysia is over the last 10 years, Malaysia has evolved to become the third most preferred destination worldwide oh. mm. for shared services and outsourcing. Right. You know, and, and from that perspective, you've got India, which people recognize as shared services and outsourcing. Mm -hmm. You've got China, mm -hmm. and then you've got Malaysia as a third most preferred destination. 
And very often when I ask big multinational companies, why have you moved your shared services to Malaysia? Why have you moved your back-end jobs to Malaysia? They say, one of the main things is people. We love the people of Malaysia. Oh. We love the people, the quality, the talent, the, the ability for them to come forward and learn and do things. Mm. Right. And, and that has, you know, it's a massive, massive thing that not many people in Malaysia realize that mm -hmm. we're the third top in the world because of the quality, the talent that we have as a country. Ah. Wow. So, so, yeah. I see, and the ability to speak uh, English. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, more importantly, <coughs> the ability to speak many different languages. Mm. Malaysia is in the heart of Asia. Mm. Exactly. We're between India and China. Mm -hmm. We speak Chinese, Indian, mm -hmm. Indonesian, mm -hmm. Thai. We speak many different languages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, this ability to bring jobs into a location that only speaks ah. one language mm -hmm. ah. is difficult. I see. But Malaysia, we address the world. Ooh. You know, Malaysia truly Asia. You know yeah. that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, how do you foresee the uh, industry moving up the value chain? Um, See, in, in those days, when you start outsourcing something or mm -hmm. when you start creating a shared service, mm -hmm. very often you start by outsourcing something small mm -hmm. because you don't really know what you're going to get. But as you get more and more comfortable with the organization or the country or the government or whatever, you'll start to give more and more and more valuable stuff. Mm. So shared services and outsourcing started about 10 years ago in Malaysia. Today we have about 80,000 people working in this, uh, in this industry. Today we've got about almost $13 billion dollars worth of business coming into the country wow. as a result of this. Uh -huh. But what's happened is the salary levels have started to go up. Ah. It means that people around the world, companies around the world, are trusting Malaysians more and more. Ah. In the past, they used to outsource low-end stuff, call center work, for example, uh -huh. right. selling and receiving calls and mm -hmm, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Today, they're starting to outsource finance functions, HR functions, human resource functions, mm -hmm. banking mm -hmm. functions, engineering functions, and the salary levels in shared services could start as low as two and a half thousand ringgit a month. Mm -hmm. That's the very basic. But as you go up that value chain, it's like a pyramid. As you get to the top, it could be 40, 50,000 ringgit a month mm. Mm. in shared services. Mm. You know, and many Malaysians are starting to move in that journey. Mm. So in the past, shared services outsourcing was seen as a very low end job. Right. Today, <coughs> you'll find people of all manners of disciplines mm. getting inside there to try to make money, mm. moving up the value chain. Okay, Sophia. Yeah. We know where to go. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I'm here today okay. is to try to encourage more people to ah. consider right. shared services as, as a carrier of choice. Mm. Right. You know, mm. any discipline, you could go in from engineering, medical, finance, mm -hmm. uh, legal, and all of these people coming through, the lawyer comes out and says, I want to become a lawyer. But instead of becoming a lawyer, maybe they want to do something else. Maybe they don't want to go to court and fight. Maybe they join a shared service organization. The guy who's going in to do medicine, six years at university, coming out to say, maybe I join a general hospital mm -hmm. or a clinic. Another option is to join shared services mm -hmm. and support medical facilities around the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So the common perception of SSOs is basically it's not exactly a permanent job. And some will probably say they will uh -huh. work at very late hours or irregular timings. What's your take on that? And for now, why should SSO be a career of choice for probably upcoming youth, the Gen Y or upcoming ones? Yeah, your take your on summary that? on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it goes back to the point of what do you want in life as a choice? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you can do call centers. Mm -hmm. You can do multiple shifts. Maybe you like to work the night shifts or the day shifts. That's okay. But when you work in this space, you're going to support multiple time zones. Why would somebody work in a different time zone? It's because you're supporting countries across the world yeah. that are operating in different time zones. So maybe you're supporting France, so you operate in the Fran French time zone. Yes. But you're learning a global culture. <coughs> you're learning a global language. Mm -hmm. You're interacting with people around the world. You're not just doing Malaysian stuff. Yes. Malaysian stuff is great. Uh -huh. But what if you want to see the world? What mm -hmm. if you want to get out there and travel and understand different cultures and different heritages? Yeah. You can go into that. So shift work is not necessarily bad. Mm -hmm. Shift work gives you the freedom to do other stuff. But, but shared services is not just about call centers and shift work. Uh, again, you can have eight to five jobs. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at me, I'm an old man. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sitting in shared services now, so <laughs> yeah, and, and we all move up the value chain and uh -huh. there are thousands of people working right. in this space right now. Uh -huh. Bear in mind, Malaysia is one of the top locations in the world and this is an opportunity for all people in Malaysia to get involved and make a lot more money. Amazing. Mm. Mm. Sounds Merry like Christmas. A, sounds, oh. like a, yay. <laughs> sounds like a good choice for us to Venture into, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm, Part after time. Next year. <laughs> 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 she knows what I mean. All right. Well, your opportunity to, you know, 
Wish. Shoot out your greetings to the whole of Malaysia. Well, on behalf of the Multimedia Development Corporation, mm -hmm. we handle all the ICT in the country coming into Malaysia. We help international companies come here and we help domestic companies to go overseas. But today I'm here to talk to you about Malaysia, people in Malaysia considering uh, a step up in life. You know, do consider joining the shared service industry in Malaysia, outsourcing, you know, great opportunities. And I'd like to wish everybody Sincerely, uh, Merry Christmas, season's greetings, Happy New Year. Yeah. Yay! Thank <laughs> you, thank you, Michael Warren, Vice President, Shared Services and Outsourcing Cluster of MDAC. Thank mm. you. Thank Welcome you. to Malaysia. Yes. <laughs> so ponder on it and actually figure out if this industry would probably be something that would be your calling. So mm -hmm. we're going to take a short little break for the second topic, the Malaysia's Christmas Open House celebration. Yay! Yay! It's going to be huge. <laughs> Don't go, go anywhere. anywhere.